Exodus chapter 14, I'm going to read several verses to get the context of what is happening. If you're a student of the Bible, you know what happens in this portion of Scripture, but I want our minds to be refreshed. We'll begin reading verse 13. The Bible says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you to, de- to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift up thy rod, but lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. The angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face, and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud, and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided, and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. It came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked into the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels and they drave them heavily that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians and the Lord said unto Moses stretch out thine hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their horsemen and Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to its to his strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. We thank you for the good time of fellowship. We thank you for the good testimonies. Lord, it's all been good because you're a good God. Lord, if we got what we deserve tonight, we'd be in hell. But I'm glad I'm not going to hell. I bet, I'm glad I've been adopted into the family of God. I'm glad for the grace of God that, Lord, you showed me when I didn't deserve it. But yet, through your grace, I've been saved by uh, uh, your marvelous grace, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we're thankful to be able to come tonight. We're thankful Brother Donald, Miss Crystal, was able to come, brought little baby Elizabeth We're thankful you have blessed their home with her. Lord, we know that they'll raise her in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Lord, I do pray for those that couldn't be here, those that are sick, those that are providentially hindered. I pray for Miss Mary tonight. I pray you'd touch her. I pray you'd give the doctors the wisdom they need. I pray she'd regain the strength in her arm and her leg. And God, I pray that the treatments will shrink the tumor. God, she'll have full quality of life. Lord, we know... We have many that could testify that, Lord, they had cancer, but they don't have it anymore because of your good grace. And I pray that you'd show that grace to Miss Mary once again. Father, I pray for Chet Jones has to have this major surgery tomorrow. I pray you'd be with him. And God, I pray you'd touch him. Guide the surgeons and the nurses. And God, 
I pray he'd come through it and have a better quality of life. Father, I pray for the other requests that were mentioned. You'd heed to each and every one of them. I pray for Brother Thad. You'd touch him tonight. Lord, we know he'd be here if he could. And there are others, Lord, I pray you'd touch them. But for the next few minutes, I pray you'd arrest our attention. And God, I pray you'd be glorified in our midst. And God, I pray you'd touch our hearts. Send revival these days. And I pray that, Lord, uh, 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 Jesus would be high and lifted up around here tonight. And I pray that your perfect will would be manifested to every heart. I pray for that one that may be struggling, that God, you would touch them. I pray for that one that is seeking, they would find. I pray for that one that may be in our midst tonight, lost without the Lord, that, Lord, they'd get saved. Uh, I pray for that one that, Lord, uh, just needs your touch and needs some answers. And God, I pray you'd touch them. Uh, Father, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. And I pray that, God, uh, 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 when everything is said and done, folks would say, boy, it was good to be in the house of God. Uh, bless as only you can. We'll thank you for it. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. I wanted to draw your attention to a couple things. Uh, first of all, notice the dilemma. We find in verse number 8, the Bible says, And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand, uh, but the Egyptians pursued after them. Uh, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh uh, and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea uh, beside uh, whatever that Hebrew name is right there or Egyptian name uh, Phihirith or whatever and Baal Safon and when uh, Pharaoh drew nigh the children of Israel lift up their eyes and behold the Egyptians marched after them uh, and they were sore afraid uh, and the children of Israel and the children of Israel cried uh, unto the Lord. Uh, can I say there's a great dilemma going on here? The Lord had sent great deliverance. Uh, Israel had been in bondage unto Egypt uh, for some 400 years. Uh, 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 and the cry uh, of the Israelites uh, made it to God. Uh, 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 he saw their evil taskmasters. He saw his chosen people uh, and how abused they were. Uh, and God sent Moses down. Uh, and God, through miraculous plagues, uh, uh, had Israel uh, delivered out of Egypt. Uh, and Brother Ed, they not only left Egypt... Uh, and were free from the bondage of Egypt. Uh, uh, but Brother Peter, they left Egypt with all the spoils of Egypt. Uh, and God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Uh, and Israel just got uh, a, a little ways down the road up against the Red Sea. Uh, and here come me, uh, the Egyptians after them. Uh, Pharaoh and all of his army. Uh, he's uh, in his mind going to slay uh, uh, the Israelites. Uh, uh, listen, this isn't some small crowd, Brother Phil. Uh, they estimate some 6 to 10 million Jews uh, were out there next to that Red Sea. Uh, and here comes Egypt. What a dilemma. Huh? Have you ever felt like uh, mm, it might be the end for you? Sure. You ever felt like the Lord wasn't going to bless no more? You ever felt like there was no way out? They got the Red Sea in front of them, and they got all the Egyptian army behind them. And listen, you can take your halo off right now. You'd been afraid too. Bible said they were sore afraid. We see the dilemma. Notice the direction. Look at verse 15. Verse 15 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Notice the Lord said, You need to press forward. Now keep in mind, the only thing hindering them from going forward is this Red Sea. But the Lord gives them the direction to go in a way that no man had ever been before. Hmm? The Lord gives them direction where it looks like there is no way. We can't even swim, let alone go forward. Can I say this about the Lord? He's about ready to part this Red Sea. And the Lord sometimes will give us direction without giving us clarity. Uh -uh, the Lord hadn't parted the Red Sea yet, but he tells them to go forward. And can I say, sometimes uh, uh, the Lord will just see how much faith you got. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, 
The Lord is telling them to take a step of faith. Uh, 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 I mean, he just delivered them from Egypt. Uh, don't you think they'd have enough faith to just move a little forward? Uh, he wants them to go forward. And by the way, uh, the Lord will never part the Red Seas of your life uh, for you to go backward. He always wants us to press forward. Uh, 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 there's nothing to go back to. Uh, even the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3.13, uh, Brethren, I count not myself to apprehended, uh, but this one thing I do, uh, forgetting those things which are behind, I reach forth unto those things which are before. Uh, he said, I press on uh, for the mark of the high calling of Christ. Uh, too many of God's people are defeated because uh, you're looking back uh, at past defeats and past problems or the enemy behind you. And the Lord just says, press on, press on, press on. We need to go forward. The direction is to go forward, not backwards. Hmm? So we see the dilemma. We see the direction. Then notice the deliverance. Look down at verse number 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, uh, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Uh, notice uh, how the Lord brought deliverance. Uh, friend, I don't know how God's going to deliver. I don't know how God's going to move. I don't know how God's going to answer that prayer. Uh, I don't have those answers. Uh, but I've got good news. He's got the answer. Uh, and I've got good news. He will deliver. Uh, hey, it may not be the way you think he's going to deliver. Maybe not be the way I think he's going to deliver uh, uh, but nothing else uh, matters than the fact to trust the Lord uh, and mark her down if you're saved washed in the blood uh, one of these days he's going to bring you through and we're headed out of here and going to glory I bless his name Amen. they didn't uh, ever fret over the Egyptians anymore because he brought deliverance the dilemma the direction and the deliverance you may be faced with a dilemma. The direction is always draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to thee, and to move forward. And God is the one that brings deliverance. I'm going to preach with this thought tonight. Now imagine, you've you got to understand, I've got a vivid imagination. You've got to imagine, here they are, they're excited, they leave Egypt. They've got all the gold and silver and all the spoils they can carry with them. They're headed out of Egypt. They got their hands full. Uh, 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 some of them on carts, some of them on foot, some of them on camels. Uh, but they're headed out. Uh, and they uh, uh, get just down the road. I mean, they're rejoicing. They're having a time. They're praising the Lord. God is good. God is good all the time. Uh, and they're having a time. Uh, and they get down uh, uh, to where they see the Red Sea. And they're thinking, well, where's Moses going to take us next? And then all of a sudden, somebody sounds a trumpet from behind. Look behind. And here comes the Egyptians. Here comes Pharaoh's chariots. Uh, here they come. Uh, and they begin to murmur. Uh, uh, Moses brought us out here to die by the sea. Uh, 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 what would to God we still making bricks down in Egypt? Uh, isn't it amazing? Uh, a little adversity will cause people to cut ties with God. Uh, hey, when things get rough, uh, uh, you ought to hunker down and get closer to God. Uh, but they're looking at that Red Sea uh, and they're looking at the enemy uh, I want to preach on this thought he made a way uh, hey listen neighbor uh, he made a way I don't know how God did it but God did he made a way uh, listen he made a way when Daniel was in the lion's den uh, hey uh, Daniel was found guilty of praying to God three times a day uh, and they cast him in a lion's den uh, now I don't know about you uh, 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 but listen uh, the lion's a lion uh, 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 and lion get hungry uh, and lions like to eat people like Daniel uh, and Daniel's there at supper time uh, in the lion's den uh, and when the king came down the first light of morning uh, he said El Daniel is your God able to deliver you uh, and Daniel said hey uh, God made a way uh, he sent an angel down and shut the lion's mouth uh, hey he made a way uh, hey, he made a way with those three Hebrew boys uh, thrown in the fiery furnace uh, hey uh, 
they were guilty of not bowing down before an idol and a false god. Uh, hey, they said we'd rather die, uh, go out in the blaze of glory, uh, than to serve a false god. Uh, and the king said, I, I can deliver you to a fiery furnace. Uh, they said, hey, it don't matter. Uh, we're not bowing down to you or your filthy idol. Uh, and our God will deliver us out of your hand. Uh, hey, they threw him down uh, in a fiery furnace. Uh, that had been heated seven times hotter than it ever been heated before. Uh, when they opened it up, uh, uh, the guards were consumed by the heat and died. Uh, and uh, Dan, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, were uh, 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 thrown off into that furnace. Uh, and uh, hey, a little while longer, the king, uh, he said, didn't we throw three men in? Uh, said, yeah. He said, well, hey, uh, but I see a fourth man. Uh, who looks like the Son of God, uh, and they're up walking around. Uh, say, what are they doing? Uh, Shadrach saying, God made a way. Uh, Meshach saying, God made a way. Uh, hey, Abednego said, God made a way. Uh, God always makes a way. Uh, they came out and didn't even smell like smoke. Uh, say, Brother Doug, do you believe that? I believe every word of that Bible, uh, and I believe that's what happened. Uh, say, how can it happen? All I can say is God makes a way. Uh, hey, listen, uh, uh, God made a way with David uh, when he went down to deliver some cheese and supplies uh, to his brethren, uh, and he heard some nine foot three inch uh, giant down there cursing God and cursing the armies of God. Uh, and David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Uh, is there not a cause? Uh, David said, I'll whip him. Uh, hey, the king said, how can you whip him? Uh, he said, I slew a bear uh, and I slew a lion that came after my daddy's sheep. Uh, and God was with me then. Uh, and God will be with me then. Uh, and they put David out there uh, against this champion of war. Uh, and David, all he had uh, was a slingshot and five smooth stones. Uh, hey, he said, you come to me with spirit and sword. Uh, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Uh, and he wound up that slingshot, uh, and God made a way. Uh, uh, listen, uh, that stone hit that giant, the only place it didn't have armor, uh, right in the forehead. Uh, hey, uh, and any time you hit somebody in the head, uh, they're going to fall backwards. Uh, but the giant fell on his face because uh, God was behind him and smacked him in the back of the head. Uh, God made a way. I'm telling you, friend, uh, hang on. It may be a Red Sea. Uh, it may be a dilemma. It may look hopeless. Uh, but our God makes a way. Uh, listen, uh, Elijah on Mount Carmel uh, against 450 apartments of Baal uh, who uh, jumped on an altar uh, and cut themselves and carried on. Uh, hey, uh, made a mockery of the things of God. Uh, Elijah prays a 63-word prayer, uh, and God made a way. Uh, fire came down, consumed the sacrifice, the altar, in the water. Uh, hey, they slew those 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of the grove that day. Uh, and a crowd that didn't know who God was uh, begins to proclaim the Lord, He is God. Uh, the Lord, He is God. God makes a way. Uh, God made a way with Gideon uh, up against a great army. Uh, I mean, a massive army. Uh, and God gave him a lamp uh, and a pitcher to put over the lamp. Uh, told him, blow a trumpet and break the lamp. Uh, and when they did, uh, uh, the army trampled itself to death. How that happened, God made a way. Uh, hey, God made a way for blind Bartimaeus to get his sight. Uh, God made a way uh, for a little lad's lunch uh, of a few loaves and fishes to feed 5,000 men. Uh, plus women and children. Uh, hey, God made a way uh, for an old boy named Legion who was possessed with many devils uh, uh, to be found clothed in his right mind. Uh, hey, God made a way uh, for a woman that had an issue of blood. Uh, hey, spent all that she ever had. Uh, seen many physicians. Uh, didn't get better but got worse. Uh, but one touch of the hem of his garment. Uh, God made a way. She was whole. Uh, hey, uh, God made a way of Lazarus. Uh, dead in the grave for four days. Uh, he cried out, Lazarus, come forth. Uh, and here he came. Uh, God made a way. Uh, hey, for the widow at Nain, uh, 
whose only son died uh, and she's heartbroken uh, and the Lord just touched uh, 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 the buyer they was carrying him out on uh, and he rose up uh, and God made a way uh, for that Shunammite mother whose little boy died on the wall uh, and she says it is well uh, she got to the man of God and God made a way uh, and her boy lived again uh, God made a way with Jairus' daughter uh, hey they was mourning her uh, Jesus said she sleepeth uh, and they laughed him to scorn uh, but he said daughter rise uh, and she got up out of the bed uh, God made a way uh, four men carried a man uh, tore a roof off of a building uh, lowered him in a house uh, hey Jesus said take up your bed uh, rise and walk God made a way uh, he was carried down there but carried his bed home uh, hey God made a way uh, uh, for sinners to be saved uh, Jesus went to the cross of Calvary uh, shed his blood gave his life uh, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures uh, that all that would look to him uh, put their faith in him uh, he'd save them from their sin uh, wash them away uh, and adopt them into the family of God uh, and change their life uh, God made a way uh, Third Saturday night of March 1974, uh, God made a way. Uh, a little 10 year old boy sitting about three quarters way back on this side of the church house uh, that night heard about Jesus wanting to save him. Uh, that night made his way to an old fashioned altar. Uh, God made a way for me, uh, and God will make a way for you. Uh, I'm telling you, God makes a way. He makes a way. We say, hey, it's too big. Not for God. Right. It's too much. Not for God. Right. There is no way for you, but not for God. Because even when there is no way, He makes a way. Well, let me show you how He makes a way. Can I say, first of all, He made a way by sending a comforting word. Look again at verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now I'll preach for about 40 minutes tonight, and you still won't get half of it. He preached for about 30 seconds, and it was exactly what they needed for God to make a way. He sent a comforting word. It brought a calm to their troubled soul. Remember what we read up there in verse 10? They were sore afraid. He says, Fear ye not. He said, Preacher, I'm faced with something tonight. Fear ye not. Long before you ever knew there was a problem, God knew right where you'd be. And God, already started making a way fear ye not you see he makes a way by sending a comforting word he makes a way by sending a comprehensible word there's nothing difficult right here I mean we don't need a scholar from the Hebrew to explain this to us we don't need uh, 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 somebody with 47 doctorate degrees to expound of what he says, he says, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Everyone from the least to the oldest could understand that. And I've got good news. The gospel is so simple that from the least to the eldest, it can be understood. God makes a way. He gives a comprehensible word. You know who makes getting saved difficult? Christians. We try to over-explain it. The, the gospel's simple. Amen. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's pretty simple. Huh? Now I know Baptist preachers tell you you've got to know the hour and the time and what you said. No, you show me chapter and verse for all that junk. It's not there. You know what is there? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yeah. Pretty simple. See, it's a comprehensible word that makes a way. It's a comforting word 
that makes a way. Can I say this? It's a challenging word that makes a way. Look what he says. Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Can I say it's challenging when he tells us to stand still? See, we think we got to help God out. I've got to be doing this, I've got to be doing that, I've got to do this, and I've got to do that. And all the while, you're spinning your wheels and God's waiting for you to get done. Because He challenges us to do nothing. Stand still. Hmm? I don't know about you, Miss Marcia. I don't like standing still. I don't like waiting on God. I don't like it. Let me do something, Lord. Nope. Did God need any of us to speak the world into existence? Did God consult us on how to name the stars and fling them out there on nothing? Does God ask our opinion on how to paint a sunset? It's a great day in our lives when we realize God don't need us. What makes Him God is He is the self-sustained God. We need Him. He don't need Our breath is in His hand. Huh? And God says, for me to make a way, stand still. That's the challenge. Now listen, what you all going for, and what we as a church family going there's some fear there. The Lord says, calm down. Fear not. And he says, just listen. Comprehend what I'm saying. And stand still. Whew, that's not easy. Uh, we want to call everybody and have everybody praying. And praying's good. But there comes a point when we've got to just stand still. Boy, it's a challenge. That's a challenge. People say, Preacher, how come we're not tearing up dirt and building a building? I'm just standing still. As y'all know, God says get a backhoe out here. We'll have a backhoe out there that day. But He hasn't, and I'm not. Just standing still. It's hard. All the experts, whatever they are, say that when you're on your Sunday morning, when you're running seventy five percent of your building, your your sanctuary, it's time to build. Well, we're well over that. We're about that tonight on Wednesday night. So it's time to build. But I don't want to build without God. Churches get in a mess when they do it without Him. I want Him to make a way. It's challenging to stand still. It's a challenging word. It's a comprehensible word. It's a comforting word. But He makes a way by sending a convicting word. He said, what are you talking about? Look what He said. Fear ye not, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. See and not do. Now I guarantee you they's having a business meeting down there and guys were saying if we could get enough buckets we could start uh, taking this Red Sea and throwing it off to the side. Maybe we can get across it. Huh? The Lord said no, don't need your help. See, it's convicting when God says, you just watch me. I don't know how many times we have to be reminded of the power of God. But if Sunday morning didn't remind you how God can do what God wants to do, 
A young lady got saved without preaching, without us running her off into a back room and answering four million questions. God showed up, God touched her heart, and God saved her. And we stood by in awe, and God said, that wasn't nothing. He made a way. The psalmist said in Psalm 73, 26, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. What God wants us to do is to come to the end of ourselves and realize we can't move Red Seas. And we have to be under conviction to realize we have to trust God to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. It's a convicting word. I have no doubt, Brother Ray, God could ask you to do anything and you'd forsake all and do it. I've only known you 25 years. And not only you, I can go right down to Rose and say, if God wanted you to do this, wouldn't you do it? And you'd say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, when God makes a way, he don't want any of us to do anything. And that's hard. That's difficult. That's convicting. But can I say, when God does it, it's always right. Huh? He sends a convicting word. God makes a way by sending a commanding word. This is what he says. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. See, God's word is commanding in the fact that it doesn't need any help. His word is powerful. You know, no one will ever get saved without His word being presented to them at some point in their life because we're begotten again by an incorruptible seed. That young lady got saved on Sunday morning, but she'd been sitting under preaching for a couple months. It's a powerful word. The word of God transforms sinners into saints. We can't do that. At very best, all we can do is point them to Jesus. But his word's a powerful word. It's a precious word. Peter said it's full of exceeding precious promises. It's a precious word. That's why we need to do everything in our power to make certain that the next generation has it. It's a precious word. Can I say that his word pardons people from their sin? Hmm? Now listen, if the governor sends you a pardon, that's a good thing. But if God sends you one, that's a tremendous thing. Hmm? His word penetrates. You know that it penetrates to the intents and the thoughts of the heart. You know your heart is deceitful and you don't even know your heart, but the word of God can penetrate every bit of junk that's in your heart and get to the root of the matter. His word permeates. His word is so powerful and so wonderful that he can give it to a man of God to stand up and preach it to a congregation of this size and everybody here will get something different. They'll get exactly what they need out of it. Only the word of God can permeate that. Dr. Seuss can't do that. Huh? But the word of God is so personal that it permeates and brings you what you need on your level. Hmm? Can I say this? His word provides. Provides everything you need. Can I say this? His word makes all things possible. Because you realize in his word that without God, nothing is possible. But through God, everything's possible. Because hmm? he makes a way. And can I say, and we also find that his word will never perish. It's forever settled in heaven. It's a commanding word. It was through the word of God they were told to go forward. It was through the word of God the Red Sea parted. It was through the word of God that the sea drowned all Pharaoh. It was through the word of God that they were journeyed on for 40 years in the wilderness and God sustained them. Thank God for the word of God. He makes a way by giving us a message. Now listen, in order for him to make a way, 
we must comply with his word. He'll not make a way if we don't do what he says. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 39 says this. Know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. Verse 40. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments which I command thee this day that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. We are to do what thus saith the Lord. And when we do it God's way, God makes a way. I said all that say this. <laughs> Don't turn your back on God. He makes a way. Don't sell him short. He makes a way. Always be attentive to what he says so he can make a way for you and what you're faced with. You're faced with something tonight? Why don't you come? Ask the Lord to help you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Ask the Lord to help you to fear not. Ask the Lord to help you to get out of the way so he can make a way. He's got the answer, friend. And whatever you're facing, it's probably too big for you. But it's nothing for him. Why don't you let the Lord make a way? This Bible's full of accounts where God made a way. God didn't love them any more than he loves you. And he didn't love them any less than he loves you. And God's no respecter of persons. And if God did it for them, he'll do it for you. If you allow him to make a way. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. If you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord, we'd love to introduce you to him. God make a way to save you. He already did. He'll save you. If you're here tonight and you're saved, you're faced with a mountain. It's just a molehill to God. If you're here today and you're faced with something, you just need his touch. God make a way. Say, Brother Doug, it's a Red Sea. God will make a way. God wants you to go forward by trusting in him. Will you let God make a way? Some are already coming. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do bless you. Thank you, Lord, for being the God of the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for making a way. Lord, I don't know what people are faced with, but Lord, you knew before they was ever born what, that, what would befall them even this very hour. So God, I pray that Lord, you just make a way for them. Help us to take to heart the message you gave Israel so many hundreds of years ago. And God, help us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God, work in people's hearts and lives. God, do for them what they cannot do for themselves. Help us, Lord, to let go of the reins of our hearts. Help us, Lord, to get, let go of the reins of our lives. Give you complete control. And God, make a way. And we'll bless you for it. Thank you for being a great God. Now, blessing this invitation. Speak to hearts. Oh, Lord, we'll thank you for what you accomplished. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.